Okay, so get this. You are not going to believe this. GitHub Copilot just made a huge E announcement at their universe event. And um, it's all about choice. Remember how they used to only use OpenAI models for their AI coding help? Yeah, Copilot was practically built on OpenAI's models like Codex and GPT. Well, get ready for a major shakeup. Yeah. Because GitHub just revealed they're adding more AI models. Mm. And not just from OpenAI. We're talking Anthropic and Google, too. We've mm. got... Uh, some articles, and even a pretty excited YouTube video mm -hmm. breaking down all the details. Yeah, this is a big deal. We're not just talking about offering developers more options. Uh, it hints at a possible shift in the power dynamics of the AI world. There's been a lot of talk about tension brewing between Microsoft, who owns GitHub, and OpenAI. So this could be like the dawn of a new era for AI-assisted coding. An era where competition breeds some serious innovation. Precisely. And to really grasp the significance of this, we need to look at what these new models bring to the table. Okay, let's dive in. First up, we've got Anthropic's Claude 3.5 Sonnet. It's being hailed as a coding prodigy, absolutely crushing those complex coding challenges and scoring incredibly high on benchmarks like SWE Bench Verified and Human Evol. It's designed to assist with the entire software development process. Think of it as your coding companion helping you write new code, debug existing code, and everything in between. Next, we have Google's Gemini 1.5 Pro. Now, this one is fascinating because it boasts a massive 2 million token context window. For our listeners, that means this AI has an incredibly long memory for code. Plus, it's multimodal, so it can juggle code, images, and other data types simultaneously. It's not just suggesting lines of code. It's designed to understand the entire context of what you're building. Mm. Imagine getting lightning fast responses and insights that connect the dots in ways you might not have considered. So is it safe to say that OpenAI is out of the picture? Not so fast. OpenAI is still very much in the game with their new O1 preview and O1 mini models. They've really focused on boosting the reasoning abilities of these models. What does that mean for developers using it? It means they can tackle more complex coding scenarios and produce code that isn't just functional, but also well-structured and maintainable. So it's like having a whole team of AI coding specialists at your disposal. Yeah. Each with its own unique skill set. Exactly. And here's where things get even more interesting. GitHub isn't just limiting this multi-model approach to Copilot. They're bringing it to other features, like their brand new Sparks tool, which is still in development. Wait, what is Sparks? Imagine building entire applications just by describing what you want using natural language. It's like having an AI developer that can instantly translate your ideas into working code. Whoa. Hold on. I need to process this for a second. So we've got this coding showdown between AI models and a tool that essentially lets you build apps by just talking to it. It's definitely a lot to unpack, hmm. but it points to a future where coding becomes more intuitive and accessible. And here's where I need your expert insight. One of our sources mentioned that Claude 3.5 Sonnet is running on GitHub Copilot through AWS Bedrock. Isn't that a little strange? Microsoft owns GitHub and has its own cloud platform, Azure. It does raise some eyebrows, doesn't it? Yeah. It begs the question, is Microsoft planning to stick with AWS in the long run? Or is this a temporary arrangement? You're right. It adds a whole other layer of intrigue to this multi-model shakeup. So what does this actually mean for developers like our listener? It means you have more control over your coding experience. You can choose the AI model that best aligns with your coding style, the specific project you're working on, or even just your mood that day. It's like having a customized AI toolbox where right. you can pick and choose the best tool for the job. But I'm curious, what about Sparks? How does this fit into the bigger picture? Sparks takes this concept of AI-assisted development to a whole new level. Imagine being able to create a simple web app by simply typing I need an app that tracks my daily to-do list. Sparks could potentially build the basic framework for that app, saving you hours of coding. Wow. So not only are we seeing these powerful AI models becoming available, but also tools that can essentially build the scaffolding for our applications. Yeah. That's pretty mind-blowing. It is. And it's a testament to the rapid pace of innovation in the AI field. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Picking up where we left off, um, let's delve deeper into how this multi-model approach might reshape the future of coding. Okay, so we've established that developers now have this incredible array of AI tools at their disposal. Right. And this has some pretty profound implications for the skills developers will need moving forward. You're saying that the very definition of what it means to be a good developer might be changing. Exactly. In the past, 
Being a skilled coder meant mastering specific programming languages and frameworks. You had to know the syntax, the libraries, the ins and outs of a particular coding ecosystem. But now with these powerful AI assistants stepping in, those foundational skills are still important, but they're no longer enough. So what else comes into play? Well, think of it this way. You're no longer just writing code. You're essentially managing and directing a team of AI coders. That's a great analogy. It's like being the conductor of an orchestra where each AI model represents a different instrument. Precisely. You need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of each model, know how to give them the right instructions, and be able to evaluate the code they generate. So it's more about understanding the capabilities of these AI tools and how to best leverage them to achieve your goals. Right. It's becoming more about strategic thinking, yeah. problem solving, and creativity. It's about being able to articulate your vision clearly mm. so that the AI can translate it into code. And this shift also opens up some fascinating possibilities for developers who might not have traditional coding background. You're talking about people who have amazing ideas, but maybe don't have years of experience with Java or Python. Exactly. Tools like Sparks could be a game changer for them. Imagine a designer who can now prototype an interactive website without needing to know HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. Or a scientist who can build a custom data visualization tool without having to learn a complex programming language. It democratizes the process of software development, allowing more people to bring their ideas to life. But wouldn't this shift also create some challenges? I mean, yeah. won't some developers feel threatened by the rise of these AI coding assistants? There's bound to be some apprehension and resistance, but I think it's important to remember that AI is a tool not a replacement for human developers. It's about augmenting our abilities, not replacing us altogether. Think of it as a collaboration. AI can handle the repetitive, time-consuming tasks, freeing up developers to focus on the higher level aspects of software development. Things like design, innovation, and user experience. So it's less about humans versus machines, yeah. and more about humans and machines working together to achieve something greater. Exactly, and this brings us back to the idea of choice. With this multi-model approach, Developers have the freedom to choose the level of AI assistance they want. Some might prefer to have the AI handle most of the heavy lifting, while others might want to retain more control over the coding process. And that's the beauty of it. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. It's about empowering developers to work in a way that suits their individual style and preferences. And as these AI models continue to evolve and improve, the possibilities become even more exciting. Imagine a future where AI can not only generate code, but also help you debug it, optimize it, and even suggest improvements. It's like having an AI partner who is constantly pushing you to become a better developer. And let's not forget about the potential impact on the software development landscape as a whole. You're thinking about things like faster development cycles, reduced costs, and a surge in innovation. Precisely. With AI handling some of the more mundane aspects of coding, developers can focus on tackling bigger challenges and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. It could lead to a whole new wave of software applications and technologies yeah. that we can't even imagine yet. And that's what makes this so thrilling. We're on the cusp of a major technological shift, and it's exciting to see how it will unfold. Okay, so we've talked about the impact on individual developers mm -hmm. and the broader software development industry. But I'm curious to get your take on the potential downsides of this multi-model approach. Of course. As with any major technological advancement, there are potential risks and challenges we need to be aware of. Like what, for instance? Well, one concern is the potential for over-reliance on AI. If developers become too dependent on these tools, they might start to lose some of their core coding skills. It's like using a GPS for every trip, uh, even if you know the way. Exactly. It's important to strike a balance and make sure that developers continue to hone their own coding abilities. And what about the potential for bias in these AI models? Hmm. I mean, they're trained on massive data sets of code, which could reflect the biases of the developers who wrote that code. That's a valid concern right. and something that researchers and developers are actively working to address. It's crucial to ensure that these AI models are developed and used in a responsible and ethical way. Absolutely. We need to be mindful of the potential societal impacts of these technologies and work to mitigate any unintended consequences. So it's not just about embracing the possibilities, but also about being aware of the potential pitfalls and working to address them proactively. Right. It's about ensuring that these advancements benefit society as a whole, 
and don't exacerbate existing inequalities. I think that's a really important point to emphasize. Technology should be a force for good. And it's up to us to guide its development in a direction that aligns with our values. Well said. And yeah. I think this is a perfect segue into the final part of our deep dive, where we'll explore some of the broader implications of this multi-model approach and what it might mean for the future of technology as a whole. Sounds intriguing. I'm eager to hear your thoughts on where all of this might lead. All right, so we've explored the impact of this multi-model approach on individual developers and the software development landscape as a whole. And we've touched on some of the potential challenges and ethical considerations. Now, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on the bigger picture. Where do you see all of this leading? Well, if we step back and look at the trend, it's clear that we're moving towards a world where AI is becoming increasingly integrated into every aspect of our lives. And this multi-model approach in coding seems to be a prime example of that. Exactly. It's not just about making coding easier or faster. It's about fundamentally changing the way we interact with technology. You're saying that this shift in coding could be a harbinger of things to come in other fields. Absolutely. Imagine a world where you have personalized AI assistance for everything from writing to design to scientific research. Whoa. Hold on. Paint me a picture here. What would that actually look like? Okay. Imagine you're a writer struggling with writer's block. Happens to the best of us. You could turn to your AI writing assistant and say, hey, I need help brainstorming some ideas for a sci-fi short story. The AI, using its vast knowledge of literature and storytelling, could then generate a list of potential plot lines, character archetypes, or even write the opening paragraph for you. So it's not about replacing the writer, but about giving them a creative boost and helping them overcome hurdles. Precisely. Mm. And the same principle could apply to other creative fields like music composition, graphic design, even filmmaking. Okay, I'm starting to see where you're going with this. AI is a collaborative partner across a wide range of disciplines. Exactly. And this extends beyond the creative arts. Imagine scientists using AI assistance to analyze complex data sets, identify patterns, and accelerate the pace of discovery. Were doctors using AI to diagnose diseases earlier and more accurately? The possibilities are truly mind-boggling. And as these AI models become more sophisticated and specialized, we can expect to see even more transformative applications. It's both exciting and a little daunting to think about the potential impact on society. I agree. It's crucial that we approach these advancements with a sense of responsibility and ensure that they're used for the benefit of humanity. It's a reminder that we need to be actively shaping the future of technology, not just passively reacting to it. Well said. And I think that's a key takeaway for our listeners today. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah. what's the one thing you hope our listeners walk away with? I hope they understand that this multi-model approach in coding is more than just a technical shift. It's a sign of a much larger transformation that's underway, a transformation that will touch every aspect of our lives. It's an invitation to embrace the possibilities of AI, to be curious, to experiment, mm -hmm. and be active participants in shaping the future of technology. And to remember that the choices we make today will determine the kind of world we create tomorrow. That's a powerful message. And as always, we'd love to hear from our listeners. What are your thoughts on this multi-model approach? What excites you? What concerned you? Hit us up on social media. Let's keep this conversation going.